Wallace, NPN patient advocate, founder of PV Reporter and NPN Cancer Connection, and your host for today's first episode of our Patients Are Asking program. We would like to thank our sponsors, AbbVie, Insight, and Pharmacentia for their support for today's program. Today, we are very pleased to have Dr. Prince Baraj Bose with us. Dr. Bose, please give us an introduction. Hi, David. Uh, happy to do this. Uh, uh, I am uh, one of the leukemia faculty at uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in uh, Houston, Texas. Uh, I uh, focus on myeloproliferative neoplasms, uh, PV, ET, and myelofibrosis, as well as systemic mastocytosis. Okay, excellent. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Bose. You're welcome. Um, our first question is from a polycythemia vera, or PV patient. She asked, I'm taking Jacopy five milligrams in the morning and 10 milligrams at night. Are there symptoms I might expect if I'm progressing to myelofibrosis without getting a bone marrow biopsy? Yes, and that's a common concern uh, for patients. So how do I know that my PV is progressing to myelofibrosis other than through a bone marrow biopsy? Well, the most classic thing uh, for PV uh, progressing to MF would be a lack of requirement for phlebotomy. Now, for somebody who is already on Jacophy, I presume their blood counts are well controlled and they are not needing phlebotomy anyway. But, but generally, uh, the clue is that you start to see the anemia worsening, uh, you know, as the case may be. So for somebody who whose PV is not controlled, suddenly you start to notice that they're not really needing as much phlebotomy or not needing as much cytoreductive therapy to control that hematocrit. Or uh, for somebody who's already well controlled, uh, um, you could start to see uh, that they are becoming more anemic. So I think that would be the biggest um, sort of red flag for me that would make me want to do uh, more of an evaluation. Uh, the rest of it is on the labs. You know, you might see some blasts show up. You might see uh, LDH go up. The spleen may enlarge. Now, that is something that the patient may recognize or the physician may recognize. Uh, the white blood cell count may start to creep up. So all of these are clues to uh, PV progressing to MF. Okay, very good. There seems to be more discussion these days on next generation sequencing. Uh, when would you typically recommend this test for a patient and what are the potential benefits? So next generation sequencing is something we routinely do at my center, but not on an ongoing basis as a routine follow-up test. So it is something I would always do at diagnosis or at initial evaluation of a patient with MPN. And also uh, something I would do when I am uh, concerned for clinical progression when I am, uh, you know, suspecting a progression of the disease uh, to, uh, let's say, to MF from PV or ET or uh, transformation to AML, which of course is a very serious uh, complication. But I would not routinely do NGS as one of my three-month follow-up tests, for example. I would do it when it is uh, indicated by a clinical change that makes me concerned for disease progression. A patient asks, I'm experiencing bone and joint pain. Can you explain why that occurs and what are some possible solutions? Yes, so bone pain and joint pain, muscle pain, these are actually all uh, fairly common uh, and well-recognized symptoms in myeloproliferative neoplasms. Uh, um, I don't know if we know whether the patient has PV, ET, or MF, but actually uh, you see them in all three. You can see them in all three, more in MF than in PV, and probably the least in ET. Now, they are believed to be due to the, you know, the cytokines, the, the, these, these chemicals that are released by the malignant clone and by their uh, you know, supporting cells in the bone marrow microenvironment, as well as liver, uh, for example. So you see all these cytokines which are elevated in patients with uh, MPNs, 
And the JAK-STAT pathway is responsible uh, uh, in large part, and JAK inhibitors are probably the best drugs to control cytokine-related uh, symptoms like this. Um, there could be some other uh, symptomatic treatments as well, but I think overall the JAK inhibitors probably are your best bet in controlling uh, uh, cytokine-driven symptoms. Okay. A PV patient is asking, can I get pregnant and deliver full term naturally or simply said give birth? So, yes, so this does come up, you know, uh, relatively infrequently, but it does come up. So the uh, most common MPN uh, in the setting of pregnancy is ET. However, uh, PV is encountered as well, just, just not as, as, as commonly. And MF is very rare. Um, but no, the answer is absolutely yes. Most uh, pregnancy outcomes are good in patients with MPN. There are a few things to be remembered, uh, which is you need to uh, be under the care of not only a hematologist, but also a, an obstetrician that is uh, experienced in high-risk pregnancy. That's very important that co-management is. And then a few general guiding principles would be aspirin throughout pregnancy, low-dose aspirin throughout pregnancy, six weeks of low molecular weight heparin after delivery, postpartum, so six weeks of low molecular weight heparin. These are fairly standard guidelines. There could be exceptions for individual circumstances. And if a cytoreductive drug is required based on you know, a prior clot or a prior uh, pregnancy loss or you know, uh, whatever the indication might be, then interferon would be the drug of choice, not hydroxyurea uh, for someone that is, that is pregnant. Now, one thing to remember is that pregnancy is associated with volume expansion, plasma volume expansion. So the hematocrit is probably going to be lower during pregnancy because of that plasma volume expansion, just something to keep in mind. But th those would be my, my uh, uh, you know, just a few general remarks, the low dose aspirin, the six weeks of low molecular weight heparin after delivery, and if cytoreduction is needed, then an interferon. But every case is, you know, should be should be individualized and certainly handled by both a high risk uh, OB specialist and a hematologist. Hello, my name is Meredith Manning. I'm the general manager of Pharma Essentia based here in the United States. For those of you who aren't familiar with Pharma Essentia, we're actually a growing biotech company. We're Taiwanese based and our primary innovation focus is on rare blood cancers. In the near term, we're hoping to bring a product to market that will address many of the unmet needs in the NPN area. For the past year, we've spent a lot of time building out uh, the company so we can help support many of the needs in the MPN community. And we're thrilled to be a part of the community and we look forward to continuing to partner with you. Speaking of the team members, uh, I would like to pass it over to several of our team members so they can share more about what they're passionate about and what we're hoping um, to do in the very near future. I look forward to meeting many of you, hopefully face-to-face -face in the near term. Hello, my name is Dr. Raymond Urbanski. I am the Senior Vice President of Clinical Development and Medical Affairs here at Pharmacentia. When I think about the diseases collectively known as myeloproliferative neoplasms, or MPNs for short, diseases such as polycythemia vera, essential thrombocythemia, and myelofibrosis, I see areas not only of significant unmet medical need, but areas of great opportunity. The opportunity to provide innovative medicines to patients, to caregivers, and to healthcare providers. We drive this innovation by focusing on the science. We are excited and looking forward to working with all of our colleagues in the MPN community. I believe that together our efforts will have a tremendous impact on the patient's lives. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Kate Reedy from here in Boston at Pharma Essentia. 
I head up the marketing and business intelligence team. And can I just tell you how excited we are to be a part of this growing MPN community? My team's goal in part is to advance the dialogue, the dialogue between HCPs and patients that really today focuses mostly on near-term risks and consequences of disease in Pivera to one that includes not just near-term, but near and long-term risks and consequences of the disease. And to do this, we need to listen to you and we need your help. And we want to understand what you're thinking and your patients and your communities are thinking. Our mission here at Pharma Essentia is to raise expectations on what treatment effectiveness should start to look like and what those conversations should look like. They should be focused more than just on near-term outcomes. They should be focused on both near-term and long-term outcomes of Pivera. And we look forward to having more conversations with you. Hi, everybody. My name is Sam Lynn. Senior Director of Business Operations at Pharmacetia. Just wanted to drop a quick thank you note to our friends at the MPN community. We appreciate the collaboration that we've had together for several years. And I just wanted to thank you personally. I know that this is really at the core of what's driving and what's important to us within our DNA at Pharmacetia. And more so than ever, moving forward, we're gonna have uh, the importance to be great collaborators and support this community. So. Wishing everyone a pleasant day and just wanted to thank you again. Hi, my name is Kristen Griffiths and I work on the public affairs team at Insight focused on MPNs. I'm very pleased to be here today to represent Insight and I would like to thank David and MPN Cancer Connection for having me and giving me a few moments to speak about our company and its commitments to patients. A little background on Insight. Insight is a Wilmington, Delaware based biopharmaceutical company committed to making a difference in the lives of patients through scientific discovery. Rigorous science is at the core of everything that we do to develop, discover, and deliver novel medicines that will meet the serious medical needs in oncology and other diseases. We are committed to providing better outcomes to patients through the medicines that we develop and the education that we provide to support the community. One of our most important commitments is to ensure that the appropriate patients may have access to the medicines that, that they need for this reason, we have developed a patient program called Insight Cares to help support patients and healthcare providers access their prescribed medication. For eligible patients, Insight Cares offers prescription drug verification, prior authorization support, free drug and copay assistance for those who qualify under the program's terms and conditions, as well as ongoing education and support from a representative. Patients who have concerns about access to their prescribed medication should contact Insight Cares for assistance. Information for patient access can be found at www.insightcares.com. Once again, that's insightcares.com. And we highly suggest that eligible patients enroll in Insight Cares even if you don't think you will need access initially. Circumstances can change and if an eligible patient is enrolled, we will be able to provide the individual assistance more quickly if needed. Regarding clinical trials, we are currently enrolling in clinical trials for MPNs. If you're, suggested, if you're interested uh, in clinical trials, please contact your healthcare provider. Detailed information about Insight's clinical trials can be found at insightclinicaltrials.com. Once again, that's insightclinicaltrials.com. We strive to enhance the patient community to integrate an authentic patient voice through our initiatives. Partnerships like the one we have with MPN Cancer Connection have really been key in helping us um, understand the unpet, unmet patient need and caregiver needs, including disease awareness uh, and also providing um, a true authentic voice in the MPN community through the materials that we create. We host a website called voicesofmpn.com where we provide access to MPN information, patient stories, access to inf information on MPN community events such as Facebook Live programs, patient meetings, podcasts, and also a symptom tracker. So I highly suggest that you check out voicesofmpn.com to uh, see that information. 
And in closing, I just wanted to say thank you again so much for giving me a few moments to speak to you today. Programs like this allow Insight to utilize our resources to help improve the lives of individuals impacted most on the diseases in which we work. So thank you so much and have a great day.